History of Literary Translation Lecture 1 Translation in Antiquity Literary Translation in Middle Ages Literary Translation in Renaissance 1. Translation in Antiquity European tradition of translation is supposed to have started in ancient Rome about 3000 BC. The beginning of Roman literature is related to Livius Andronicus translating Odyssey from Greek into Latin. Livius was a Greek prisoner who had been captured by the Romans who did march for their culture. The father of Latin literature, Quintus Ennius, most famous for his Ennials, also translated from Greek for the Latin theater. The ancient world came to formulate the first conceptions of translation. As a result of accumulation of translation experience, two opposing schools appeared. The rhetoric school of translation, Cicero and Horace, admitted comparatively free translation of the source language text and required strictly observing the rules of their target language. The grammar school, beginning with the Bible translation from the second century, required word-for-word -word translation of Greek into Latin. Thus, Romans first established the distinction between sense-for-sense -sense and word-for-word -word translation. Translation in Middle Ages The Middle Ages was the period when the Christian religion became firmly established. Therefore, the main object of translation was the Bible. At first, it was translated from Hebrew and Greek into Latin. The greatest event in the Middle Ages was the Bible translation by St. Jerome, and his Bible became a standard Latin Bible. St. Jerome was regarded as one of the Christian saints until the 17th century, and recently the International Federation of Translation has proclaimed Jerome's feast day, September the 30th, the International Translation Day. Two years later, the Bible was translated into Gothic by Bishop Wolfila. In the history of translation, the establishment of translation school in the 9th century by Anglo-Saxon king Alfred the Great was of great importance. He inspired the translators, who were mostly monks, to translate five Latin works into Old English. That was the first attempt at translating books that all men should know into the language that we can all understand or the vernacular, mother tongue. The books that all men should know were the books in geography, history, philosophy, theology, and ethics. In those times, Scientific text translation was overly faithful to the source text translation of fiction for conscious borrowings, free adaptations of the ancient texts, or the requirements to the translation's community. Renaissance translation. This period marks a greater role of translating secular literature and culture. Special emphasis is placed on translating the classics, ancient Greek and Roman literature, which was the model for Renaissance ideas and culture. Still, being international means of communication among educated people, Latin was a primary target language until the 17th, 18th century. A new phenomenon at this time was the vernaculars or mother tongues, served as source languages, Petrarch sonnets, 
and Gargantua and Pantagruel by Rabelais were translated into Petrarch, translated into Latin, one of the novels by Boccaccio, Italian writer. German entertainment literature was translated into Latin. Latin, a much used language of greater prestige, was incomprehensible for ordinary people. Few people could read it, so translations were accessible only to the intellectual elite. From the 16th century, humanists became to promote translation into the vernacular for an expanding readership who did not have direct access to cultural classical sources. The tendency widely maintained through the Enlightenment period. The 10th century gave world the first manuscript, Latin English Glossary by Abbot Alfred, the first bilingual glossary to find its way into print was French English vocabulary for the first travelers, printed in England by William Caxton in 1480. By far more substantial in character was the English Latin vocabulary called Pomporteur Sporerum, storehouse of words for children. Completed by Pynson in 1499, it is thought to have been composed by Geoffrey Gomarian in about 1440. In the Renaissance period, translators made an effort to summarize the rules and recommendations for good translation. One of the first translators to formulate the theory of translation was the first humanist, Etienne Dolay. 1509-1546. He published five principles, how to translate from one language into another. Number one, the translator must fully understand the sense and the meaning of the original author. Number two, the translator should have perfect knowledge of both source language and target language. Number three, the translator should avoid word-for-word -word renderings. Number four, the translator should use forms of speech in common use. Number five, the translator should choose and order the words appropriately to produce the correct tone. It is evident that Dolly's principles stress the importance of understanding the terms traduction, translation, and traductor, translator. While Renaissance secular literature was translated primarily from vernacular into Latin, the Bible translation was another direction. The cardinal principle of that time, the ideology of Reformation, was that each person should be granted access to the text of the Bible in his or her own language, that is, in vernacular. The result was the development of education and literacy. The first translation of the Bible into English was carried out in the 14th century by John Wycliffe. Renaissance period also witnessed the beginning of translator skepticism. Dante Alighieri is believed to be the first to doubt the absolute possibility of the accurate translation of the text. His reasoning was that it's impossible to convey all the harmony of poetry through another language. 